we thank God you have come back to the, with the second part. To whom, Lord, shall I go? Amen. This is what Peter declared, what Peter said. Amen. We had ended looking at Ahaziah, son of Achab, returning to the God of his ancestors. God is asking why my daughters are not healed, why me, my people are not healed. This man, this would be a believer, is going back ref consulting. He has a fallback of his God, the ancestral God, the God of his mother. And that's the reason why they, they wasn't healing. And so when the prophet of the Lord came, he said, you will not leave your bed, you are going to die. Why you are not going to be delivered is because you have a fallback on the God of your ancestors. You have gone to refer, you have gone to consult the God of your ancestors. We are talking God has a marriage, the mixed marriage between believers and unbelievers. Because in such stressful times, in such hard times, the non, the make believer, or even sometimes the believer is drawn back to go and consult. The non-believer will go back to the gods of his ancestors to consult. Amen. And God hates that. That's why he wants a believer who goes straight to the word of God through thick and sin, whether life or death. Whether he sinks or he swims, he will go back to the God of his, his God and consult from his God. Like Peter said, Lord, to whom shall I go? Thou and thou alone hast the words of eternal life. So there was no any other point of reference Peter could go to. He had to go only to the Lord. And those are the people God is looking for. If there is any deliverance to come, God is looking for such believers who can only consult God, whether it means death or life, he will stick to his God and say, Lord, to whom shall I go? Thou and thou alone has words of eternal life. If I can read the scripture I read in Jeremiah chapter 8, amen, verse 21. For the heart of my daughter, for the heart of the daughter of my people, I'm hurt, I'm black, Astonishment has taken hold of me. I want to read it also in Uganda. Amen. God says, Kubanga omwala wabantu wanga fumiti dwa echiwundu. Nange fumiti dwa echiwundu. Nziru gade oksama lila kunkute. Because the daughter, because the daughter, amen. Because the, the daughter of my people is hurt. Because you are hurt, amen. Because you have been discomforted, amen. Because you have been wounded, God is wounded, God is, dis, is discomforted, God is sick because you are sick, because you are suffering, God is suffering, because you are in pain, God is suffering. This is what God is telling us, amen? And he's the one who shares your afflictions. He's with you through all, but the problem is we can't trust God that much. Because of the reference to other gods, because of other attachments, because of failure to recognize where the word of eternal life is. That's what Peter said. No, to more shall, shall I go. Because thou and thou alone has the words of eternal life. Listen, God is telling us, for the heart of the daughter of my people, I'm hurt. God is hurt. God is wounded. God is afflicted because you are going through an affliction. So he's ready to deliver you. But where is your heart? Where is your faith? Where is your anchor? Amen. God is wounded. God is afflicted. God is in pain. God is sick because you are sick. God is hungry because you are hungry. Whatever you are going through, God is going through the same thing. That's what he's telling us. He's saying, for the heart of the daughter of my people, I'm hurt. I'm black. Astonishment has taken me. God is hurt because you are hurt. God is suffering because you are suffering. God is sick because you are sick. Amen. God is bruised because you are bruised. God cannot leave you. He will go with you throughout all the entire journey. But the problem is, is asking, what if have you seen in me not trusting me? What if have you seen in me? Why are you doubting me? Why, are you, why don't you believe in me? Why don't you give me your heart? Amen. God is asking. There are reasons why people are not doing it. Let's turn to 2 Samuel chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 12. Amen. The first reason people have a fall back on the God of their ancestors, they go for reference, they go to consult, 
Amen. And you leave God and ask me, really, what have I done? That you leave me alone. Is there no God in Israel? Is there no God in your churches? Is there no why? Amen. Now people have made politicians, governments, their God, the arm of their supply. Is there no God in your churches? Is there no God in your heart? Amen. Say first Samuel chapter 2. Listen. Verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Eli was a priest. Eli was the high priest. Eli was the pastor. Eli was a bishop. Eli was the archbishop. Amen. So the sons of the pastor, the sons of the parish priest, the sons of the reverend father, the sons of the archbishop, the sons of the bishop didn't know the Lord God. Amen. And Belial, Belial was a noun, which means worthless, wickedness, lawlessness, and godly. So the sons of the pastor, the sons of the bishop, the sons of the archbishop, the sons of the reverend father were sons of the wicked one, were sons of lawlessness. They were sons of the ungodly sons. They are sons who never knew God. And we bring up children. Because we think our children, they are children, they should become closer to serving God where they have not even been called because they are your sons. And the reason why you bring them closer, not because of the urge to serve God, but because you have attached God, the service of God with the pay, with your own gains, with your own selfish motives. You think it's for, to, for, for your own profits. Amen? The Bible continues. Verse 13. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in season, while the flesh was boiling. Amen? With a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he struck it into the pan, or kettle, or cauldron, or pot, all that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself, not for God. These offerings were, had been brought for, as an offertory to God in appreciation, but he took for himself. Amen? He took for himself, so they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came there. Thither. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh for, of thee, but raw. Look at it. People's hearts were vexed. People got disgusted with offerings. These people, their hearts were on offerings, not salvation of the souls. These people brought sacrifices for their sins. But the way these people are taking the sacrifices, they are taking them for selfish motives. They are taking the fat and the parts. They are take, asking more than what they are required to do. Amen? They are for selfish motives. They are looking at sacrifice more than the salvation of the soul. They are looking at offerings. That's why they bring their sons closer. Not because in the sense is a the desire, the urge to serve God, but because of this attachment, there's a selfish benefit. Amen? That's why people's hearts are vexed and they cannot trust more their God. And God is asking why. The problem is the, with the priest. The problem is the pastor. The problem is the bishop. The problem is the church leaders. The problem is, is on the pulpit. That's why people are not trusting that much God. That's why people are suffering, because of the leaders, because of the people who are holding the word of God, and they're holding it in deceit, in selfishness. That's why people are suffering. That's why people are sick. That's why people are not delivered. People are not looking at people's souls for salvation, but they're looking for selfish motives. They're looking at their own selfish ends. Just they're making profit out of the service of the work, the work of God. Amen. They are not about salvation amen, of the people. They are about offerings. Always pr preach money, blessings. Money, money has taken hold of pulpits. Blessings have taken hold of pulpits. What about the salvation of those souls who are bringing that money? What about the salvation of those? What will be their end? The people who are giving in that offering. 
God gets disgusted. People's hearts are vexed and no longer want to trust God because of the people holding the word of God in this city. Amen. They demand for the fattened parts of the sacrifice. They ask much more than what God has asked. And they have broken people's hearts. They have vexed people's hearts. People are disgusted. That's why people even are dodging churches. It's a matter it's dodging. No, even when they dodge, people go in their homes to demand. They come with demand notes, demand envelopes. Amen. They have asked more than what God has asked. In their hearts, people are vexed. They are disgusted. And all what that these things are done in the name of the Lord. Amen. Twisting the scriptures to their selfish mode, to their selfish ends. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, the Lord demands, he says, You have cheated him in offerings and tithes. Tithes are the is word of God to pay tithes. And offering is the word of God. You pay according to how God has blessed you, how your heart is pleased. Paul said God loves a cheerful giver, not to be coerced into giving. Amen. Tithe is the tenth of your income. Then offerings according how to you feel your heart, how joyful your heart is, how God has blessed you. And in doing this, that means God is going to bless more of the work of your hands and you'll be giving more. The more he blesses you, the more you give. That's the principle of God. But these people have asked for much more than... It's like a taxation. It has turned out to the burden. People are stressed, overstressed. No, they no longer even want to trust God because of the people who are holding the word of God. And God asked why. Peter looked at all these things and said, I have to take my soul where, where there is words of eternal life. And when he found those words of eternal life in Jesus, in Jesus' church, I have to go to a church where they preach eternal life. And he said, where can we go? For thou and thou alone has words of eternal life. The prevailing word factor was the words of eternal life. And he found where the words of eternal life were being preached. Amen. So well, let's continue. Verse 16. Listen to what these people are doing. And listen to what they are doing now. And see what they are doing now. And if any man said to him, let, not, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as the, as much as thy soul desires, then they would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it to me now, and if not, I'll take it by force. They will take offerings by force, and this is what they are doing. They are coercing people. They put you in a fix. Money is being preached on the pulpit instead of the word of God for selfish motives, for selfish gains, and people's souls are vexed. And God is asking, why people can't trust me? Why am I not as not healed? I'm bruised because they're bruised. I'm hurt because they're hurt. I'm sick because they're sick. God knows what you're going through. But there's an obstacle. Amen? Verse 17. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for the men abhorred the offerings of the Lord. This is what's happening. And God is asking we are in such a situation where we need God. We are in such a situation. You as an individual, you need God. You need to stay where words of eternal life are. You need to stay where there is deliverance. We deliverance. You need to stay where those words of deliverance are. And you trust that God. But people have been prevented from trusting God. And God is asking why. Amen. Baram in Gilead. 1959, paragraph 8. This is June. The, the word why, God asked the question, when God made a way of escape, for, a way for people to escape danger, or sickness, or trouble, and disasters, and people turn it down, refuse it, then ask why, what's the reason, and you don't accept, you don't accept it. God has given you a way of escape, but you can't accept that way of escape. God asks, why? I put it for you. Why aren't you accepting it? Why aren't you taking it? Amen. 
What's the reason? What evil have you seen in me not to accept my provided way of escape? I want your deliverance. I want to see you healed. I want you to, I want to see you escaping this danger, this pandemic, corona, COVID-19. But God is asking, why aren't you accepting my way? Why aren't you, why are you refusing it? What evil have you seen in me? Amen. Is there no bam in Gilead? Paragraph 14. Why is the daughter of my people so sick? Isn't there, is there no, isn't there a physician to minister this? Are there preachers to preach deliverance? Are there preachers to preach words of eternal life? Are there preachers to manifest the living God to the saints? Are there preachers to manifest the God of deliverance to the dying souls? Why? Why many people are not delivered? Why, my people, I'm hurt. God is equally hurt. For the sake of his people, for the sake of his saints, he says, the death of my people, his children, God is hurt. When he sees his people, his children going hungry, and there's no deliverance, he says, is my heart shortened that it cannot deliver? No. But why are my people not being delivered? Amen? And they are preachers and, and they are priests and they are physicians and they are prophets. Amen. Sure there is. God has his preachers. He has his prophets. Yet God has his bam yet. And God's daughter is Is it because the daughters refuse to take the medicine? What if have you found in the medicine? Oh, what people have, what if have you found in God? The medicine is the word of God, which Peter is talking about. Lord, where shall we go? For thou and thou has it words of eternal life. The words of deliverance. You have the word to deliver our nation. You have the words to deliver our people. You have to the words to stop the sickness. You have the word. But why aren't you taking the medicine? Why aren't you delivered? God is asking, what's the matter with the church? They have refused to take the proper prescription of what he wrote out for the balm of the, on the day of Pentecost. People are preaching their things. They manufacture tongues. They fabricate tongues and deceive people that this is the Holy Ghost. On the day of Pentecost, there was no fabrication. You preachers, you know very well, go and hide. And elders in the church, you hide in rooms and practice these tongues and come and speak them. Show me where that was done on the day of Pentecost. Why? The medicine there. Why can't you give out the medicine? The prescription is there. Why do you read differently? Amen. Don't try to fool with it. If you take something different, it will not work for you. Time has come that God has, get, has to get you by his word. Amen. That's why he lets these things come. To prove where you have, whether you have been having the word of God or whether you have not been having the word of God. Amen. We have the word and the sinners are there. But where are the sinners no more being converted? Sinners are dying in their seats. Sinners are dying in their sins. Amen. Yet there have been church members. But die in their sins without repentance. Amen. Amen. God is asking why? Why is the Holy Ghost no longer given? Why are people not receiving the Holy Ghost? Why are their lives not being converted? Amen. Is the word at fault? Is the medicine at fault? Oh, is the sick at fault, the sinners? God is asking. It's man's fault. The preachers, the medicine. Or the word. Is it the fault of the sinners or the fault of the preachers? Who pick out what they want? Amen? And leave out the rest. Preachers preach what they will benefit them. The sinners, they just pick out what they think they want. If you preach contrary, if you preach their conviction, if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you preach something to condemn them, they will never come back the next Sunday. They want to pick out what they want and Leave out what they don't want. They are selective in the way they take this medicine. And preachers are selective in the way they administer the medicine. 
And the medicine is the word of God. And God is asking, why aren't my people being delivered? Amen? They don't want the meds to take the medicine, the word for healing, salvation. But to, to their benefit, they prefer affiliation to salvation. People prefer affiliation to salvation. Amen? They got church for affiliation, not salvation. Peter chose a church with the words of eternal life. His emphasis was on the words of eternal life. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou and thou alone has words of eternal life. The prevailing factor, the thing that touched Peter, the thing that pulled Peter was words of eternal life. But this is what people are refusing. This is what you have refused. And you prefer affiliation to be still called a big member, Zechaos, who was a rich man. But when the words of eternal life met with Zechaos, he had confessed his sinful ways. He had confessed though he was the administrator general of Uganda Revenue Authority. He had to confess. He confessed. He said, I refund. My sins are many. Lord Jesus, my sins are many. I'm a sinful man. He confessed. He never preferred affiliation, but he preferred salvation. He chose words of eternal life. Why are you not being delivered? In this situation, God is with you. If you can take the medicine, you can take the word of God. Amen. We've got Bam in Gideon. We've got the word for deliverance. But why is there is no healing? Amen. You pay tithes and offerings for God to bless the work of your hands. But you are not being blessed that much. Why? Because the way the medicine is being administered. The way the word is being administered. Amen. That's why Peter said, to whom shall we go? He preferred the words of eternal life, the full word. Amen. God is looking for people to bless. God is looking for people to heal. God has been looking for people to deliver. Amen. God is looking for people who can fully and wholly trust his word. Who can fully and wholly trust work according to the prescription of his medicine. Amen. In order to deliver you, God has not failed to deliver you. But you have not taken the full word. You have not followed the instructions. You have not administered the full word. You have not taken the full medicine as it has been transferred to you. Amen. Let's take a lady, Hannah. I'll rush. Hannah, chapter, first Samuel chapter 2. This lady, listen. Amen. Hannah, she was suffering. She was going through a time of distress. She was being bruised. She was being abused, reproached. But when she said no, she never turned to the God of her ancestors because they were not there. She turned to the God whom she has been instructed into to believe. Amen. She turned to the God of heaven. Listen to what she said. And thus she received deliverance from God. She received the healing. If you can trust God like Anna trusted God, healing is on your way. Healing is in your hand. Healing is in your heart. Deliverance in your way. You don't have to cry of anything more. You don't have to be in pain anymore. I see God. I see deliverance coming your way. I see God rising out of his seat because his heart is bruised because you are bruised. He's barren because you are barren. He says, I cannot continue in this situation. I have to come into the condition of my daughter. As he says in Jeremiah, I'm astonished black. I'm hurt. I'm bruised. I'm sting. I'm discomforted. I'm sick because my daughter is sick. Hannah knew that God. She said, there's no any other God to fall back to. There's nothing. I cannot take the word of God in any other way. I cannot twist it. Let me face God squarely. Amen. Hannah prayed, verse 1, first Samuel chapter 2, and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. Hannah Everything was in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Amen. Listen to her prayer. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Amen. 
She believed the God. She believed his word. Let Peter believe the word of God. Despite the mistakes Peter had, she be, he believed the word of God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Even up to now, God left the church in the hands of so Peter as a pastor. He gave the Holy Ghost to the church. Peter as a pastor. The man with so many mistakes. But he saw a word where the source of life. He saw the words of eternal life. He came to the church where the full word was being preached. He never joined any church phone. He said, I will go to the church where the full word of God is being preached. The words of eternal life. That's where deliverance is. Hannah says, there is none as old as the Lord, for there is none besides thee. Amen. Neither is there any look like our God. Talk no more of exceeding proudly. Let no arrogance come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. God weighs actions. Amen. Verse 4. The bowels of the mighty are broken like today. The things you trusted in are broken, are dead. The bows of the mighty are broken, and they that stumbled are guarded with strength. The weak, whom you always abused, are guarded by strength. They that are full of, they that were full hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry seized. So the barren has borne seven. And she that has many children is waxed feeble. Who was living in Ambana say they are just crying. Houses are being swept by floods, waters. They refuse the advice because they were connected. They could do anything they wanted, contrary to even when they are being advised that you are destroying nature. But today they are crying, they are feeble. Businesses are locked, closed down. Australia, the biggest airline in the world, closed down. 16,000 people have lost jobs. Will the government sustain? Why can't we trust our God? God, thou and thou alone, has words of eternal life. To whom else shall we go? Amen. Verse 6. The Lord kills and the Lord makes alive. He brings down from the grave and brings up. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts them, lift them, lifts up the beggar from the dung hill to set them among the princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the word upon them, the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. This is the time God has to keep our feet. Amen. Verse 10. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he shall be thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. Amen. Peter saw the Lord in the same way Anna saw the Lord. Amen. God's hand is not shortened that he cannot deliver. God has not reduced his power of deliverance. It's we who have got our sinful ways mixed with the word of God. And God cannot work that way. He cannot accept that. Amen. God cannot accept a mixture. He's not a mixer. He's a separator. He separates the light from darkness. He separates righteousness from sin. He cannot accept your sinful ways, mix his word, and bring it to him and take that. No. Amen. We need God with skin on. We need God with two legs. Who can walk into my condition? Who can walk my way and come and join in my condition? I need God to come my way. He must have two legs on. That's the God I need. Amen. He walked into Hannah's ways. Her affliction. I want God with two eyes to see what I'm going through. I want God with ears to hear my prayers. Amen. I need that God, the high priest who is touched by the feeling of my infirmities, the high priest of my confession, the high priest who is not far away from me. Amen. I take examples. Abraham, he needed a God. He needed one time a sacrifice. 
He, God, provided a sacrifice. He was Jehovah Jireh. Abraham, when he was weak in strength, he needed a God of strength, El Shaddai. God, when old age had stricken him and Abraham needed a child, the God of strength, the El Shaddai, God of peace, came and told Abraham, feed, 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 and gain strength. So Abraham's face was lifted. I need that God. I need a God who can provide himself a sacrifice. I need a God who can give me strength when I'm weak, when old age has stricken, stricken me, when I'm weak in the faith. I need that God who's breath, who can tell me, feed, 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 and I gain strength to go over my enemies, to go over my afflictions, to go over my sufferings, to go over my stricken condition. Amen. Joseph, he needed a God who can deliver out of the pit of death. And God, that's a God we need today. He needed a God that can deliver out of prison to make you sit on the right hand of the throne of the Most High. He sat on the, the hand of the Most High throne in Egypt. And they said, whatever Joseph says, obey. When you hear the trumpet, bow down your knee. Joseph is knee. Joseph is coming. I need a God who can deliver from prison, dungeons, to the highest throne. And moreover, the right hand. Right hand means power. Moses, to Moses, he was a God that delivers out of a mouth of crocodiles. God that shuts the mouth of crocodiles. Daniel, he was a God that shuts the mouth of lions. Hebrew children, he was a God that delivers out of fire. So what's your testimony about the God you are talking about? What testimony do you have about that God? To them, he was a God, a burning fire. Who burns for other fires? Amen. To blind Bartimaeus, he was a God that opened the eyes of the blind. That's what the God he needed. And that's the testimony he has about, about that God. What testimony do you have? Jabez. He needed God who can expand the boundaries of his business. And that was a God, amen, in every condition, high priest of, touched by the feeling of our infirmities. To, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou and thou has the words of eternal life. We need a God of deliverance. Jabez wanted to expand his businesses. And the God that expands businesses. Lazarus, he was a God that resurrects out of the grave. It was the resurrection and the life. Hannah, the God that opens the barren wombs to bear children and blesses those children. Not only to bear children, but God bless the children, the child of her womb. Amen. Removes or removed all curses and makes the children sit with princes of the world. He delivers them out of poverty to riches. That was her prayer. And that was a God to her. That was her testimony. I need a God who can open the barren room, womb. I need a God who will bless my children. I need a God who will remove all the curses of my ancestors, my parents, my whatever, whatever they done. I should not inherit their curses. I need that God. That's the testimony I should have about the God. Amen. God asks why. God asked why. Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, he, need, he needed a God that can add years to life. At the time of death, when the sentence has been pronounced over Hezekiah, he needed a God that can add years unto life. Years. He gave him more time to live. He gave, me more, he gave him more time to put right his life. He gave him more time to serve him. I need a God who can add years to my life when death is about to get me, or when we are in the same bed with death, when you are, death is bargaining on me, I need God who can add years of life to me. Amen. God is asking, why can't you believe him? What evil have you seen in God? What evil have you found in God not trust him? Peter says, you are thou and thou are Lord. Have words of eternal life. In all our dealing, in all our life, as you are moving, Amen. As we are moving, we need that God. Look, one thing in life you should first seek for is words of eternal life. Where you are taking your soul, the church you are going to, does it preach words of eternal life? Can I see Jesus in that church with words of eternal life? 
Not his ways mix your ways. Not his word mix you, your creeds. Can I get that God? If you can get where they are preaching words of eternal life, that's where you should have your soul settled. You get deliverance. God will not ask anymore why, but you come with a testimony. As you have seen these men, few of them we have, have given you, but the Bible is full of them. You come up with a testimony that is the God. When I was such a condition, he's the God that delivers out of Corona. When I'm in deathbed, he's the God that adds years. Not even minutes, but years. They cannot put you on oxygen for years. But God adds years of breath and do things of you, you, the way you want them to be done. But he asked for putting right his life. And God, had, God added him enough years. Even he got gray hair. He that God. Go where the words of eternal life are. May God reach and bless you. God bless your Sunday. God bless the work of your hands. And God bless you for the entire week. Let's pray. Precious loving Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, Father, we are humble before thee, and we thank you, Lord God, Heavenly Father. You are the God that hears prayer. You are the God that answers prayer. You are the God, Father, Lord Jesus. Your son Peter saw you and said, Lord, you are the God who has words of eternal life. And where you are is where I want my soul to rest, because that's where deliverance is. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, May you lead thy children to the place of deliverance where thy word is being preached. Lord God, Heavenly Father, there's nothing much we can do save to preach this entire word, Lord. Father, bless them. Magnify them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, let them stream through this pandemic. Lord, these trials, these hard trials, fierce trials, Lord, let thy children stream through them. Let those who have trusted you, Lord, who have put their trust in the Lord, swim, swim through these trials, Lord, at the end of the day, to have a testimony of who you are. Lord, it will be an individual testimony. Some, they don't have food, but Lord, may you provide. Some need healing. Lord Jesus, may you pass their word, deliver them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, whatever they have need of thee, Lord Jesus Christ, Father, may you pass their way, Lord, and deliver them. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we prayed. Amen.